We're back. And I keep saying that, and my little sister literally said, I can do your voice. <laughs> and she literally sat here and said it. But we are back on episode, this is 19, with a special, special guest. She's on tour most of the year now. <laughs> Tell your name for everybody that's tuning in, that's watching you, mostly, and then me. Hey, guys. I'm Stevana Delgado, and I'm really, really happy. Okay. I just love watching a fellow Mexican hustle. I mean, that's all I'm here for. <laughs> um, but I am 99 Problems on Instagram, and I'm a female comedian. And I, I'm on tour, but just to let you guys know, I sponsor myself. So <laughs> don't be jealous. I paid my way there. <laughs> hey, but she does it. But she, she does. <laughs> she's doing it, you know. And we literally just start speaking or talking about all that, uh, her journey so speak about like let's let's see how did you get into comedy so i have always been like the type of person that's just been really disruptive like i'm the girl that you know likes to be loud likes to be energetic like you know that i'm there yeah. um but i don't like to be like the annoying girl but like you know <laughs> that i'm there you know and yeah. i've just always been in trouble in, in school or like in class and i just really love like entertaining people and making people laugh like i love making people feel good like you know and growing up I you know we were talking about this earlier about how especially in like a, a Mexican household too but our generation like our parents know nothing but school like go to work go to school yeah. get a good job and so in my head that was the only way that you could succeed in the world because that's the only way that I was taught and that's the only way that I ever saw. So I didn't, in my head, being like a comedian or, you know, following my passion, making money off my passion, like it wasn't real to me. I didn't yeah. know. So I tried going to school. I tried going like multiple times. I dropped out. My The last time I said no to school was when I ran out of FAFSA because my grades were so low. They refused to give me more until I picked my grades up. So I tried my hardest. It didn't work. Oh, man. So I was like, okay, I got to get out of here because I'm not about to be going to paying to go to school. So yeah. I worked at McDonald's. I worked at the pizza shop. I like did so many things, um, the gas station. And then I just noticed a pattern every time I would get into these jobs or I would try to like do something to better myself, whether it was going to school for a different major, or, you know, getting a different job my passion like my love for that would just go out and I would get into this like depression mode because I know I knew somewhere in me that that's not what I was supposed to be doing mm. and that's not what I my purpose was and yeah. I'm gonna have to do this every single day for the rest of my life like I don't want to do that and um I just one time was on a, a YouTube and I came across the Joe Rogan podcast and it was so funny because it was like just like a small clip of him talking and he was like, you can do whatever you want in life. Like he was yeah. just saying like, you can do whatever you want. You just have to make the first step. You have to go out of your way to like try and do things, but anything is possible. And I was just like, you know what? I want to be a stand up comedian. Like mm, it just... I might Damn. as well because yeah. I thought about it and I was like, look, either I can keep repeating the same cycle over and over, doing what other people are telling me to do, what's going to be more successful for me and just getting depressed, or I can do what I want to do for four years, just like going to school. Some people, a lot of people that I know don't even use their degrees. They went to school for all that time, didn't use their degrees. So why can't I practice being a comedian and see where it goes? Like if it goes Facts. somewhere, it goes somewhere. But if it doesn't, oh, well. Yeah, because that, that, how you said, our parents have always told us, all right, go to school, you get a good job, get a house, get a family, you're set. But even in school, in high school, since you're in kindergarten, they tell you, keep going to school, good grades is going to pay off. In the, and, and like we've always said it, sometimes it does. There's yeah. a lot of people that have gotten masters and doctors and everything, and they're wherever they are in life, but our day and age, like, you're, how old are you? 26. 26, 25, our age group and generation, there's either people that already went to school, got the degree, still didn't do anything that, you know, us that didn't go to school can get that same job, and maybe they get paid, what, maybe a dollar or two more? Yeah, or they, I see it a lot where they get the, the degree, they get the husband, they get the family, and then they're just like, okay, now what? 
Yeah. You know, because that's just what we were told. Like, this is what a good life is. So we grow up thinking, okay, there's only one way to do life and one life only. But little do we know, like, our talents are not all the same. Our purpose is not all the same. We all bring something different to the table. You know, like you do, your girlfriend does, like I do. And it's not to go to, not saying it's like going to school, but like we have gifts in other areas. Yes. You know, that people need. And you got, and how you, how you're saying and you're, and you're, preaching it like perfectly there are certain things that you're just you have a calling for you may have a calling for like we're just watching another podcast for cooking you may have a a calling for making people laugh and in reality when people make you laugh you're that's laughing is good for your soul like yeah it cures sicknesses yes generally and you know you don't want to be somebody that's just like stuck up someone that's just mad at the world and mad at everybody for no apparent reason right so like so i do feel like those people that are very stuck up and negative and um like mean i've learned that those people are not going after their calling I noticed like if you look at them, their life is just very basic and circle. Yeah. And to be honest, we're not here to live a basic life. You guys, we're not. Anything is is possible. Like there's people that make thousands and thousands of dollars off of YouTube by uploading sounds of the rain because people will literally go on there to listen to the sounds of the rain to like calm their anxiety or like go to sleep. And those people are making thousands of dollars on it. Like there's four year olds. That guy, little kid Ryan, like oh, there's four year olds on YouTube making, all day long. being millionaires. Yeah. So who, why can, why can't we? Yeah, why can't we do what we want? And you know how you said earlier before we even started recording, outside of the camera, like why can't we put ourselves out there and one day get paid for it? One day, it how you said it's not going to be today, tomorrow, maybe it is, but. How, do we, how are we going to know when that time is if we don't even start it? Right. Because I think that's the biggest thing for a lot of people that I'm not going to do it because I don't know what's going to happen. So let me just take the safe way out. But when you're going for your calling, when you're going for your your gift, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a blindfold. You don't yeah. know what's going to happen on that turnout. Like, we didn't know how this podcast was going to go. I just t- told you earlier, like, to invest in the microphones, the camera, the laptop, the lights. We had no idea what was going to happen. And here we are, 19 episodes in, in four months. We got, what, 184 subscribers on YouTube and getting hundreds and thousands of views, like clicks on Instagram. So yeah. what, what what's stopping us? I this? love that for you guys you know? because, like, it just literally any anything can happen like and it it just take a lot of people to think that oh that can never happen to me or they think that a lot of the things are luck yeah they think that and i used to be like that i used to be like i could never be famous or i could never do this or i could never do that because that person's just lucky that person was just born that way you know and i used to think well like i don't bring nothing to the table you know so i'm probably never gonna be lucky but now actually that now that i've actually like I'm working towards something Mm -hmm. I'm seeing none of this is luck for anybody it's just hard work that they worked for in silence when nobody saw Mm -hmm. when everybody said no when their family was saying you need to try something else like it's okay if you want to do something else when their friends were talking shit about them like all those times that they kept going the universe just gave them an opportunity and boom they were ready for it and shit just pops off and that's just how it is with life you can do literally anything that you want to you just have to be consistent and know that your opportunity is going to come and you just have to be ready for it so apart from being a comedian she's a motivational speaker (laughs) is that exactly what she's doing right now i do it all so now let's let's get into that so when you decided like hey i'm gonna go be a comedian i'm gonna do my shows i'm gonna take a risk what kind of feedback did you get from friends family anybody around you um so well I'm I well anybody who knows me knows that when I first did stand up comedy I did not tell anybody I didn't tell my mom I didn't tell my best friends I didn't tell anybody I took one friend with me and that was it and I was like you better not tell nobody that I like I'm doing this and like because if if I don't get laughs you better not say nothing and I just remember like getting like 
getting really drunk before too because i was just so nervous and i went up and i actually did really good surprisingly and the reason why i did really good though again is not because i'm lucky because i don't want anybody to think that like oh well she just has a thing where she just got up and like it worked out for it's not because i'm lucky but it's because behind closed doors i really did practice for this all the time i'm on instagram all the time saying funny yeah. stuff all the time i'm always on live trying to like practice saying something funny when i'm with people i always want to say something funny when i was in school i always wanted to say something funny so that was an opportunity for me that i literally took and that's why people need to take the risk because they don't know they could be really good at it you could have been practicing low-key your whole life yeah and you never know because you don't want to take that risk there's a, a comedian uh his name is franco escamilla he's a mexican uh comedian that is popular all over the world, right? And in one of his specials that he has on, it's actually on Apple Music already. He's literally talking and telling the people that he doesn't prepare, like he doesn't just do this out of the blue. He needs to prepare. Outside of the comedy world, outside, outside of the stage, he is a very, he's scared to talk to people. Imagine that, being a comedian that talks to millions of, and thousands of fans and shows and he is very like, it's timid. Like when you're, when he's outside that stage, like talking here, he's one of those that he will, and he says it, I'm going to say something very, very stupid because I'm very uncomfortable. So like, sorry about it. But yeah. is this, so you mentioning that, that you got out of your comfort zone, it wasn't luck. It's just, you know, it's very, you would, if you really, I'm one of those that I got to listen to people's stories. Yeah. I need to find out. You know, there are artists, there's rappers, there's uh, athletes that are top of their game. But I want to know how how they got there, like The Rock, Kobe, LeBron, mm -hmm. um, Joe Rogan. There's Matt Frazier, like all these big stars pe that people know. And it's literally like, hey, like, you didn't get there by luck. Yeah. You did something. Like Joe Rogan, like he has the highest, most highest podcast in the world yeah but and it's just having conversations like doing like what about this what'd you do this and it's like there's another podcast like no jumper i love no jumper oh, <laughs> love no low no jumper joe rogan like literally my favorites like you guys need to just watch them because they're just so like um they get each point yeah. which is is really amazing but i credit like the fact that you're doing a podcast like when you told me like hey that's be on true. the podcast i was like fuck yeah, yeah like right away like let's you, fucking spread the there message, was like no, message there was no questions asked like usually people ask like oh what's it about or this or i gotta give up like my i guess what we do here and you were just like nope fuck it let's do it and it's like yeah, yeah because let's do it with the power of the internet and you know i used to hate being born in this day and age because i used to be like oh my god i hate being born i wish i was born before the <laughs> internet blah 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 but the internet is really what opened my eyes to see what was possible had i not seen joe rogan talk about when he first yeah. started stand up and how he made a a point to go if i not you know had seen like these influencers come from nothing you know they might be people not like might, might not like them but they literally come from nothing and they turn into something and when you i started seeing people on the internet do it i was like okay then i can do it like they're just a regular person yeah. and we're all just regular people you guys the only thing is that we choose every day to we choose every day to break out of our shell that's yep. it. And I always tell people, Literally. I'm like, look, shy, it's an excuse. Like, you can say you're shy, you can say you're shy, but all it's doing is holding you back. Exactly. Like, it's holding you back. And as long as you have a work ethic, man, your shyness should not matter. Or you're giving yourself an excuse on why not to even start it. And and I think that's like the, that's a big setback for a lot of people. Like, but it goes back to that quote, like, if it was easy, and if anybody and everybody would do it. That's why there's a certain, like, there's a thousand podcasts out there, but there's very few that people know about. Why? Because those few are the ones that are just distinguished a little bit. Like, i seen, like, uh, there's a couple people that started their own podcast, and it's just, like, audio and stuff like that. Yeah. Power to you, dude. Like, you, you're getting out of your comfort zone. You're putting your stories out there. But us here, not just, like, audio, but, like, we're putting it on video. Why? Because this is the... How relaxed, how how the vibe is. Why? Because 
it's not we're we're not reading anything yeah, out of people our people want to see with their with their like they want to see what we look like and yeah, stuff like that like cause, coming from. i mean low-key if we were like not like we didn't pay attention to ourselves like you would be able to tell like because you go to the gym like yeah. i take care of myself too like you guys could tell we're put together like yeah. so people are gonna listen to us because they could see like okay they're probably doing something right but if we were not like well groomed and like we were dressed like slobs and we was like <laughs> low-key like really really heavy like they probably be like they yeah. don't know what they talk about <laughs> it, it's just that verification so would you say as one i'm really curious would you say your life is a movie yeah and every day i like go for that every single day i'm i i manifest it i'm like i'm gonna have a fun life today i'm gonna have something to talk about and i'm gonna live i'm gonna live life because we're only here for so long and we're only young for so long too like this is the best we're ever gonna look this is the most energy we're ever gonna have so let's every day just have like a crazy life and let's live it with trust that we're gonna survive like because i think a lot of people are always like oh my god but what if i die like (laughs) you not relax so so a female woman in comedy how is it it is very tricky because a lot of the guys really want to like can i cuss on here they really want to fuck you (laughs) and they're like super nerdy and like it's really really it's really difficult because um well, luckily, I have um, a boyfriend who's also a comic, too. So it makes it a little bit easier for guys who want to work with me. Like, if they want to work with me, I know they're just going to work with me. They don't expect nothing Anything from else. me. They don't, you know, they're not working with me because they just want to talk to me or something like that. Um, that's what the tricky part about it. But there's also the tricky part where women are not funny. And mm-hmm. I can see sometimes there's not a lot of women that are funny because they talk about like things like blow jobs or like them having sex. And it's like, we don't want to really hear that. Yeah. And it's the same thing with guys. Cause guys will talk about like farting and like, we're like uh, pooping and we're like, that's not funny. It's just gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like how the fuck are you talking about? Like, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Mind. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually like, I like to make jokes that everybody can relate to so that I can actually represent the girls like as a whole, you know, yeah. like I want everybody to laugh. I don't just want girls to laugh or like, I don't want just guys to laugh. Like I want everybody to be able to like yeah. really like me. So how you just said it right now, it, it, it helps you out that you have a boyfriend because you get a lot of is is there like a crazy story or event that happened to you? That um, you had a- no, but you know, when you first go to like shows or you go to mics, like the guys are like swarming you and they're just like, oh, well, let's do something like let's let's practice together. And it's like, why do you want to practice with me? You just see me one time. Relax. Yeah. Like, what if I suck after this? And <laughs> you want to practice with me? Like, <laughs> no way. Oh, so or it's like you want to get it. You want to go to like you want to go practice together. Like, what if I kill you? Yeah. <laughs> Do you even care? <laughs> I guess not, right? <laughs> Man, so that you say you mentioned you have a boyfriend in comedy. Is that how you guys met? Because of your stand up? We started together. And Ooh. yeah, so fun fact we were dating before and he would always tell me you're so funny you're so funny but i knew i was funny but like i needed somebody else to tell me like all the other people that like you know when people tell you when people you know tell you things you're like okay but like i needed somebody else to tell me and i met him and he would always be like you need to do comedy like you're really funny and then one time we got in an argument and like we didn't talk and i was like i'm gonna go do comedy like i'm gonna go be a star and then i went to go do it i didn't become a star right away but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I st- <laughs> so we failed in attempt one but we kept going as a moral yeah. story <laughs> we kept going um and then i started talking to him again and i was like oh yeah i'm doing comedy and he thought it was really cool and he was also really funny and he was going to school to be like a screenwriter mm. but him too he was like this is not going anywhere and like we started noticing it's not really what you know it's honestly who you know yes it's who yes. you know so he ended up dropping out and <laughs> because i had already dropped out of school so he ended up dropping out and we both went to the comedy club and he did he it was a little bit more rough for him i would say honestly it's a little bit more easier for me because i am a girl and they want to see girl comics succeed because there's not a lot yeah. and then they're just like more softer on you but like it's all male energy you so. take that offensive when he's when you how you just said they 
it's a little bit more softer for you like no because like, i know my jokes are gonna hit either way ooh. if to me it's like yeah go ahead think that oh, about me bitch. because yeah like i just yeah. come out i already know like these, these are gonna be so funny and i come prepared like i'm telling you like i've like literally had jokes since i was in school because i would just disrupt the teacher like all the time so i was like i have to do somewhere where i have to do something with my life where i can talk and not get in trouble yeah so yeah and here we are yeah you're I know. talking here and we not are. in trouble <laughs> So, uh, how many different comedy clubs or places have you gone to? Is this just one, or is this there's different ones that you try to go to and stuff like that? No, I'm I'm all over um, from like Riverside, and then I went to Austin, Texas myself to go do it over there. Um, in LA, there's so much in LA, and it's like so crazy just because the scene in LA, like they're literally like streets away from each other, but they're mm in such weird places like in the back of an alley or like one time we did some we do mics in people's backyards and it's like there's a bunch of people there or there's a mic that I go to and it says like it's farmer's insurance but then you open it's like all farmer's insurance and then you open the door and there's like a stage like it's there's so many weird places that they go practice. Wow. So it's really cool just to see things there, like that. Is there too. like a hidden community for this type it of stuff? It almost does look hidden, but it's because that's all the comics can literally like afford. It's like something small like that. And they just wow. literally need like a few chairs and a microphone. Like it's literally like they work with what they have. Like they have like the the lowest of the low, but they're all hustling. And like I really respect that. So how how is that environment like how you just said lowest of the low, they're trying to pave the way for themselves and let their talent or gift pay them one day. And obviously you got to start somewhere. So how is that like motivation? Is that discouragement at a point? Like what what goes through your head when you got to. So I used to get discouraged a lot and I used to get jealous a lot. I Mm. that was one thing about me, especially with my boyfriend, too, because there's times in our, our careers where I'm doing really, really good and he's not. And we'll go places and like they'll talk to me more. And then there's times where he does really, really good and like they're more on him. And it's like, you know, it's it's a little bit hard. And I do get discouraged of other people's um, work. I used to until I learned to switch that energy and be happy for them because I'm in the presence of where they're doing something great. So that means that I'm next. Yeah. Like that because I'm in that environment, like coming from an environment where I only seen people do something every single day that they hated yeah. and they were just so negative about it. Um, I'm grateful now that I'm in an environment where people are winning, people are happy, people are working on something every single day because that shows me, OK, it's possible for me. So for me, I do like I have these people on Instagram and seeing them, you know, come out of mics at like 3 a.m like there's times i'll leave la like at 3 a.m and Mm. like just just to practice for like five minutes like being out there all day um because the traffic out there is crazy so we drive to la and then we're in traffic for like an hour and then so we'll do mics we'll maybe do like three a day it's like three or four hours but we got to drive to them so we don't really eat and then just coming home late and it's just like i have mad respect for those people and i do really in enjoy working with the men because i see how they're willing to you know grind for it so it just gives me like the motivation because i do know and they'll tell you too being a girl in the comedy they're going to give you a little bit more opportunities because they want they really do want girls to succeed so that power like not not power they want that empowerment like yeah they want they want like you know more girls out there which is not bad but that's the cards that I got dealt with. So I know I'm like, all right, can't be fine. Mad at that. Yeah. Yeah. You really, you, so how you were just saying earlier, like being mad at other people's success, you can't really be mad at other people's success. Why? Because for whatever reason, you don't know what they went through. Maybe it's their time. Exactly. And they got it. Maybe we just started or you've been in their years, but we hear all these motivational speakers. We hear like Tyler Perry, um, Eric Thomas, we, we, all these, you know, big names. And then they speak about it. It took me 10 years, it took me 15 years. Bam. I am here. Like, exactly. I think one of the biggest dudes and I follow him a lot, like the rock, where are we? 25? Damn. Damn. We've been talking, talking, <laughs> we're talking, talking. Um, he went through 
college football, what is that, 18, 19, maybe 20, and then went through went to Canada for professional football, came back with a couple, like, $7 in his pocket. Like, yeah. this, this is, like, our age <laughs> coming back to now he, he was one of the biggest dudes in the WWE for wrestling, and now movie, actor. I feel that. Yeah, you don't know anybody's story, so you can't compare to, and that was another thing that I had to get into my head because there were comedians that were popping off, popping off. Yeah. And then I listen, talk to them, and they're like, "Man, I, I'm, I'm just coming off being homeless." Ooh. And I'm like, "There are, there's a lot of comedians that will live in their car just to do comedy full time, just to practice and get more opportunities, more opportunities. They will live in their yes. car." And I'm like, "I, you deserve it." I'm just like, "You deserve it because I could not. I'm not in that position. I have a bed that I sleep in at night. I have, you know, food that I get to eat. I have a shower. So my time will come when I'm ready. I probably need to earn it more, and that's fine. I'm okay with that because at the end of the day, you guys, the more you struggle, the better of a fucking story." it is to tell people like that's just it point period blake you got to think about when you just keep thinking right when i get to the top like everybody's gonna love this story about how i almost (laughs) failed how i almost went homeless about how everybody laughed at me about you know they posted me on tiktok or like you know something like it's all worth it because that's it's only gonna make people want to listen to your story Nobody listens to a story where a person just ran to the top and made it. Nobody likes that. Everybody yeah. loves the underdog. So don't ever be discouraged about being the underdog ever. Damn. <laughs> God. <you're old. laughs> Let, let's, uh, we're going to take that little, little break on this. So we'll be right back. We're back. Fuck them motherfuckers for the fourth effing time. Yeah, fourth time trying to say fuck them motherfuckers. <laughs> for the people that just made our life hell or like when we were younger, like. Oh, yeah. Right? Definitely. Specifically, that's why we just said it. But how it, I'm pretty sure everybody out there, um, me specifically, wants to know when you worked at the gas station. I'm sure you ran into a lot of people from our town, from our city. Yeah. Our lovely city of Baldwin Park. The gas station is actually what what gave me like a whole identity. Like it made me feel like important, like a person, because that's actually when like I started working at the gas station every single day was just crazy. It was literally like I kid you not leaving the gas station now i feel like an ex cholo. Like I feel like an ex gang member because I'm like I can't believe I survived. And that, that just life is not for me anymore because even people would come up to me. They're like, I can't believe you did all this shit on camera. And I'm like, I can't believe I did it either. Like just all these homeless people, all these crackheads, like crazy people coming in and me entertaining them. Like, just I think you had posted one time that uh, you almost got down. Oh, I did get down. Oh, I got, got down, down with the customer. Yeah, it was. Pumping gas and serving hands. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> It was, yeah, it was during my last times of just, you know, that moment when you're just like, fuck it, I can't do it anymore with, mind you guys, I left the gas station to pursue a business so that I can focus on comedy. Mm. I didn't like leave it so that I can just do comedy. I have a business that I can work on that I managed to to get to, to, to a certain revenue so that I'm able to leave the gas station because I was like... I got to think of something. Do I got to do something. So I started working on that. And, and I was already like to the point of the gas station where I was like, I can't be here. Not because I don't love the gas station, but because I just don't like having a boss. Um, and you just know, like when you're, you're like done with it in jobs and yep. you're just like, it's either to the point where you walk out or you do something like you crazy. Just don't care. I think the, there's a place I used to work at, you know, selling phones. I'm not going to say which one. But T-Mobile. One. Metro. You look like you worked at Metro. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Top salesman. <laughs> <laughs> the one right before that, but a specific one that my last day of work, I was high as a motherfucker. <laughs> That's it? No, but because <laughs> one of one of the reps that that I had, she was the plug, and the last day, and they were like, "All right, well, you got to work your last day." And it was my night shift. Uh-huh. I said, "All right, well, I got three hours left." We brought out edibles, everything. So I'm just sitting in the back, just like gone, like yeah, gone. They're like, dude, you gotta get on the floor. I'm like, nah. You're like, no, I don't, bitch. This is the last time y'all go see me. That's the last day, and I was just like, <laughs> see, but I thought I was bad, but I mean, even 
when we worked at a in another city, same T-Mobile, just another city, like my last day there, because I was transferring, I mean, we had alcohol all over the back. So we were in the back drinking, MDs was there, got wamas, everything. Got yeah. to the front and we're just like, oh, fuck. Hell yeah. We I still, love that. We still got to work. <laughs> yeah, I love that because I used to have a guy come in all the time and he would say, don't work any harder than what you're supposed to because you're still going to get paid the same. <laughs> like bars. <laughs> <laughs> After that day, never lifted a finger. <laughs> You just started serving fucking hands. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so, um, well, that gas station was just ran by my bosses, um, and they're fired now, so I can talk about it freely, but just a lot of things went down there. I mean, there was, like, cocaine there. There We would drink on the job. We would be leaving to go smoke weed all the time, um, and it was just, it was a party. Like, it was just really fun. The, the, our bosses had been there forever, and if customers were there to complain about us like you weren't gonna hear it because our bosses were just never there or they just (laughs) didn't want to deal with it so they would make up a story to like have our back so like for a long time I was just there and and it was just to the point where I was just like okay this is fun like I have a job where I don't need to do anything I just need to show up I just do the bare minimum but like in reality it's not fueling my passion again it's not fueling my passion it's not fueling my purpose so I'm just I'm not having fun you get to that point right like yeah just, you start feeling a certain type of emptiness yeah so I did start feeling like that and then this one morning it was 7 a.m this lady walks in and um she just like goes to because our my gas station is connected to a McDonald's and in the morning they have somebody go and clean the restrooms every morning before the customers start to come in. Now, I used to do that. I used to clean every I mean, when I first started McDonald's, I swear to God, I was a janitor at first because they would just make me sweep and mop, sweep and mop, sweep and mop, clean the shit in the restroom, like all that. So seeing, you know, people go do that, like I feel for them. Like I'm like, all right. Yeah. Like I even try to tell them too. I'm like, look, it's only for a little bit, okay? Like <laughs> Let me help you up, homie. Yeah. Hang in there. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I used to cry <laughs> doing that shit. And this kid that I used to talk to is just a like a Mexican kid was cleaning the restroom and she literally just walked in. He had like the cones up so that people didn't go and she like threw them like this. She like tossed him oh. and then she went in and he was in there cleaning and he could get in trouble for a girl being in there right. while he's in there. Like he could get in a lot of trouble and she just came in and she like moved all his stuff and he was like, I'm cleaning the restroom and she was just like, I don't give a fuck what you're doing. I have to pee like and I don't know what it was like probably it was literally in the morning and I was just over it. Like I was like 10 minutes nah, in no, I'm fuck her shit. like yeah. uh uh-uh. uh so I went over there and I was like you need to get out she was like I'm not going to do shit and I was like oh no she's giving attitude like that already like you know Triggered. like that's not there I understand you need to go to the restroom but like if she would have just been like I needed but to like, use the restroom yeah. extremely bad and she was extremely an adult about it but she wasn't and at that point too like me at the gas station I was always starting you know if you wanted to start a fight with me or something crazy was going on I was feeding into it because I was so bored I was just so bored and I wasn't happy with myself that I was just like, this Fuck is the it. only fun I'm going to have. So yeah. me and her started going at it. Um, and then she like literally came like I waited for her to get out the stall because everybody was like trying to get her out. She was yelling and she started saying these like racist things like, oh, fuck you, Mexicans. Like you wet back saying things like that. She like like uh, racist things yeah. and like it was bothering me at the time because at that time that's when um you know the world got shut down and they were exposing all this racist stuff on the internet so yeah. my mind was just flooded with mean Everything. things that people right. are saying about other races that when she started saying that it went off in my head plus connected to the point where i remember when i worked at mcdonald's and people would get at, mad at me for closing the restroom down to do my job You know, like, I remember people being rude to me and treating me like shit. So I just instantly, like, told her, I was like, hey, like, when we go outside, like, you're going to find me. And she was like, well, yeah, come at me because I don't give a fuck. And she she called me a dirty Maria, which is not the first time somebody at the gas station has called me a dirty Maria. Because I'm like, what do you mean? First off, I'm clean. I get the Maria part, but, like, come on. (laughs) 
<laughs> and so I walked outside and um, she and I was just talking crap to her because I, I was having so much fun. I was so bored that day. I was so mad that I was there that we were just talking crap to each other. And, you know, she kept coming at me, too. And she took the first hit. So, like, we started fighting and stuff. And then, like, I, I got off of her. Like, my coworkers, like, just let it, too. And then someone came and finally separated it. Um, and then after that, she was like, I'm going to call the cops. So I didn't know what to do. One of my other coworkers who actually had gotten in a fight with a customer before as well was like, she's calling the cops because she was on the phone in her car. She's like, you need to go. You need to run to McDonald's. So the McDonald's workers, all of them came out, like the old ladies and everything. They're like, go to the back, go to the back, switch your shirt. So I switch, take off my Chevron shirt. I throw on a McDonald's shirt and then the cops come and they're like, oh, this lady is talking about how she's a worker. Like, do you know anything? And then my coworker was like, no, I think she's crazy. Like, I don't know. I've it's just me on here. And then so they walked to McDonald's and they were like, no, nothing is up. So they went there and then they followed her and they pulled her over. So I don't know like, what happened. God <laughs> but I, I changed my shirt after and then I was just like, I was back like I never left, baby. How much do you want on what pump? <laughs> I'm back, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean it was just I'm telling you that gas station was just a crazy part of my life I worked with a lot of people who didn't give a shit either mm. so a lot of things were able to fly and I man when I tell you I prayed so fucking hard for a job where I didn't have to do shit it came true can I, can I be honest <laughs> with you yeah like this is gonna it's, it's same same thing you're you're working there but obviously like I pump at that gas I think I ran into you a couple times You've changed. Yeah. You've changed. Like your persona. I think at the gas station, you're not so approachable. How you said, maybe it was emptiness. Oh, yeah. Very much. Now it's just like, <laughs> what's up? Boom. Yeah. But is. I feel bad that you say that too because there's a lot of people. Because I would always post funny videos of me at the gas station, yeah. me showing what goes on every day. And I did start to talk to people and get to know them. And then there would be times where I was just mad at myself for going because I didn't have a plan. Like, think every single day I was depressed, thinking, fuck, I'm not going to do nothing with myself because I'm not good at school. Yeah. I'm not good at jobs. I don't like any of them. So I'm just going and I just feel so empty. So every day I would serve, would show up not being my best self and there were times where you know i would not you know give the right tone to people and they would come to me and they would be like i follow you on instagram and i would be like oh my god like i'm so sorry like i'm sorry that i'm i'm not like this all the I'm time like i'm that. just really not happy yeah. here and i'm i'm taking it out on you so i feel for a lot of people at corporate jobs working fucking fast food working all that shit like you do what you gotta do it's temporary you just really have to find your purpose and your gift and i do you think that like you need to try it though like yeah i do think that, that for the last part of the podcast i do like want people know to know because some people don't know what their purpose is or what yeah. their gift is and i didn't did you nah not at all i how you said like and i'm we put it out on episodes and i've said it very confidently like there's there's a lot of things that that i have i was able to do like how you said earlier i had a bed i had food i had a family i had everything you know, my girlfriend, now our son, now we're in our home. And before our, when we moved out to our first apartment, our son was on our way until I think, what was that, Brittany? Like four months later, he was here? Yeah, four, or five. four or five months. And then it still took, I would say, February to another 10 months to, she got, she got us, she got me the camera. And it was just homework that we both did. All right, what what microphones? What can we do? What should we do? Yeah. What do we need to do? And it was just, ah, oh, man, I don't know. It's don't a lot know. of dirty work. It's a lot of dirty work. It's not yeah. like school where they say, here's your study guide. Here's what we're going to do for the whole month. Yeah. And these are the tests we're going to have. It, it's like, no, you got to figure out what what's going to be my pen and paper. What's going to, you know, what test am I going to have to take? Oh, shit, that was a test. I didn't pass. I yeah. failed. All right, next test, I'm going to do better, you know? But I think you said it, like, perfectly. Like, it, it this is not how we said. This is nothing that's scripted. This is just us. Mm -hmm. This is goofy us. This is bullshit us. This is everything us. Like, there's no other other part of us and that's what it was it was literally that month before having conversations that were to me 
very helpful, very million dollar worth. All it and it literally was I need to put this on out there. Yeah. Whether it blows up or it doesn't, like I just need to do this. Why? Yeah. Because there's I don't know if you got in those messages, like dudes on, on Instagram or when I see him at the gym, like, hey, bro, I see your motivational shit. Like, bro, it helps me. Yeah, I saw it. And I'm just like, bro, <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, Yeah, because to you, you're just living life. Yeah, and I was like, all right, well, now let's do it. So we did the first one. We hit the first one with Paco and then my best friend, John. And after that, it was just like, all right, let's keep going. Let's, let's, keep, let's keep doing this. Why? Mm-hmm. Because... The main thing, I think, when you take a leap of faith, it's if you're going to stop in a month, you should have never done it because yeah. you just cut yourself short. Because what if in the second month they paid off? What if it didn't? But what if in the third month they paid off or fourth or fifth or whatever, yeah. how long it takes? Or let's normalize shit not popping off for like a year because, I mean, you go to the gym, you know, yeah. it doesn't even take a month to like develop muscles. Like the the muscles that you make in a month could be lost in two weeks. Yeah, because they're not a lot. Like people will be doing like things for thirty days. Like it does not take thirty Fuck days to get no. good at something. I'm sorry, it fucking does not. It doesn't even take six months. It could take a whole year, and that's with everything. You think about a baby, it takes nine months. You think about a freaking tree, it takes years. Everything in life has an incubation period. That's why it takes four years to graduate a high school. So if you're going to start something, don't give yourself a month. Like, don't think, oh, if I do this in a month and nobody, like, it's not viral, like, whatever. Like, no, you can get so much better than what a month has to offer you. You just really have to be patient, you know? And I want people to, like, just know it takes a long time. But what fucking else are you going to do? Like, life is going to go by anyway. What else are you going to do? Do something that you like. Because you're going to want to work at it. I already know I'm going to cut this clip out and put it out there because a lot of people need to hear what, you, what the fuck you oh, just said. Oh, beautiful. Mwah. You Chef's know, kiss to that one. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's true because, again, when you start something new, and that's what I was going to get at, when you start something new, a lot of people, and I'm talking about the closest ones to the people just around you, the people that just know you, that... Oh, they're doing that bullshit. Ha, ha. How long is that going to last? Yeah. How, well, look at here, bitch. I'm still here. <laughs> We're exactly. still doing this. How do you know what I'm doing? You're still keeping the fuck up right. what I'm doing. Yeah. And they're not the ones buying the fucking mics. They're not the ones that are reaching out to people asking if they could be a guest. They're not the ones setting up the lights every day. They're they don't not the know ones shit putting themselves about what out you with, do. A, with a group of people they're trying not. to be funny, which. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm Like, there's nobody's doing what we're doing in our own shoes. Like, that's Mexican saying, Ponte mi zapato. put yourself in my shoes. Yeah. You'll find out what it is. Maybe to you it's easy from the outside in, but once you're inside, it's... Exactly. It's, it's way route. more work than what... That's why you cannot take things personal, too, I feel like, when people talk shit. Or even a lot of the pe- times I tell people when they say, oh, my family or my friends are talking shit about... Not talking shit, but they're, like, downplaying down. it. Yeah, you yeah. know, they just be like, oh, ha, ha, I seen your little podcast or yeah. something like that. And it's like... You know what? Let them say that because I'm pretty sure they have seen you try a lot of things that you quit. Mm-hmm. There's like I know for sure, like when my friends were laughing at me, I'm like, all right, well, they can because they see me quit. Like they, <laughs> they see me try to play piano, try to like, you know, be a fucking karate. <laughs> and shit. So like I'm not even mad that they don't yeah. think this is going to I gave them I gave them those. I gave them that option to say that. But this time. It's, it's going to be for real. It's, yeah. And it's they'll come our, around and they'll it's stay. It's our calling. It's our gift. Yeah. You know, I I would say everybody can say something funny at one point in their fucking life. But there's a lot of people. There's a very few set of people that how you're saying that you're around all those people that are just trying like this is the way of life. Mm-hmm. This is what they feel strongly about that one day is going to pave the F like the fucking way. Exactly. And most of most of people, most of us that are not doing what you're doing will be like, bro, if you're not making people laugh, just fucking quit. Yeah. That's it. Just but they don't know, like, but I can one day. One day, yeah. Like, I can. Like, you know, we don't all start off cook as, like, bakers. Like, we don't know how to cook an egg when we grow up. But now, like, pretty sure we could all make a mean-ass scrambled egg, you know? Yeah. But we didn't come out the womb, like, scrambling that shit. Yeah. It's for literally anything. And, you know, shout-out to Joe Rogan because, again, he's the one that said you can get good at 
anything literally even instagram captions if you keep writing them over and over and over again like you're gonna get really good at we're instagram fucking captions. sound of waves and <laughs> yeah like there's just so many so many things but um i do like if people don't know what their calling is or what their purpose is or what their gift is because that was me at one point um just think about who you admire or who you like and why why you admire them and why you like them and also think about what you enjoyed doing as a kid because yeah. that's always going to be what it is whatever it is you want to do as a kid whatever it is you were pulled to as a kid do that because that's really what you wanted to do but somewhere along the line someone you, probably said it's better if you do this yeah. or it's more safe if you do I think this about it, you took a detour yeah you took a you you took a, a long fucking oh detour. yeah i took a long ass fucking day. i even got lost <laughs> 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 fucking, you know, I got lost. Stuck got a flat traffic. tire. Yeah. How to, <laughs> How to get a jump. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm <Bullier>. here. <laughs> yeah. But I'm back, bitch. I am Cheers back. to that. Yeah. Cheers you know to I mean? that. But uh, so you just said earlier about people uh, hating. You talked about you're on TikTok now. Oh, yeah. And you really don't post your, your stand up. But on TikTok, you did. Yeah. So I did post my stand up one time because uh, I know a lot of people on Instagram do want to see me. So I was like, let me just post something. I had a show and um, man, this is why you guys need to not even take the Internet serious either, because I had just got back from Pittsburgh, like literally the very, very like the day before that I had just got back from Pittsburgh. I missed my flight three times. I spent the night at the Dallas airport for like 10 hours. I've seen that. <laughs> uh -huh. And then I went a show the next day. So I didn't even get to practice. I didn't even really have a full meal. I didn't have really a good night's sleep. But I still went and I had a joke. I posted it and then it, I posted it on TikTok. And like just people were like sending mean, like mean comments. And like people were taking it. Because like I'm a comedian, you guys. Anything I say is like not real. And like I had a joke where I, where I was saying like, um, I don't want to, I don't want to have a baby cause I don't want to be broke and lose sleep. And then, <laughs> and then I followed it with saying like, I only get baby fever during tax season. So <laughs> I had like all these moms, they were like me and my baby are swimming in cash and we get a lot of sleep. And I'm like, Oh my God, I don't fucking care. Like, okay. Wait, like, what? Just people they, take it so literal. Yeah, like, they were bro. like, some girl was like, good thing you're not a mom because I don't be using because you be using your your children for cash. And I'm like, it's a fucking joke. Another girl was like, my two year old could tell better jokes than this. I wrote back and I was like, girl, fuck your two year old. You're on my TikTok. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck what she could do. <laughs> but it, I, I, um, until you really meet a comedian or you're at an actual show. Yeah. Right? Because unless you're, you, we watch and everybody watches a Netflix, Hulu, YouTube. But I, I remember going to an actual com comedy show. Like, obviously, it was like Gabriel Iglesias. Big name already. Mm -hmm. But what happens in a show isn't always just what's put on video. Yeah. But it, it's those c comedians, like I see, um, what's the dudes from, uh, from Wild and Out. Um, Nick Cannon? Yeah, but the... the I'm like, you guys, I even had people saying, look at her dirty Air Forces. Like, they're making fun of my fucking shoes on the thing. I'm like, they, oh. like they're just tennis shoes. What's, what's like, it? They're like Chico Bean. Uh, the what? redhead girl? Oh, her um, and I then Chico the Bean, the other, the, other, the other dudes. And then what is, what's his name? The uh, Black something like the african uh-huh i don't know but, i i know their faces but, but i don't know their names I literally ran into it today and there were the white dude that was like talking smack to him on wild and out had glasses he was like you with those prescription prescription glasses when is jesus coming <laughs> but it's like i've seen like on their stand-up and they're like seeing or people in the audience are talking smack to them I even ran to it on TikTok where um, a f uh, audience member says something mm -hmm. and the comedian really just said, shut the fuck up. Yeah. And, and I always tell him, like, shut up. Like, I don't care. Like, yeah. I was like, why this? And I said, I don't give a fuck. You still on my TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're still on my shit. You can make fun of it. You can you put a view on my fucking shit. You engaged it. You bumped it up. And I'm yeah. going to reply back because I'm going to bump it up higher. And what's funny is that... um. 
I po- there I was getting the mean comments when I was in Austin for comedy and I was just like working out like cuz that whole day I was replying back but I was replying back like funny shit but also I was also replying back to people being like bitch where's your con where's your content like no yeah. fair like you can come to me and make fun of mine but yeah yours is judge. private we don't yeah. know what you look like we don't know what you sound like so you ain't even giving me nothing to make fun of you back like that's not fair like that yeah. shows like you're a pussy you're yeah. a pussy where, like, I'm making myself available. You wouldn't even have the balls to do a little inch of what I do. So, like, I'm not right. even worried about it. But I was writing back because I was drunk and, like, it was funny to me. And it really did take up a lot of my day. And then I remember working out in the hotel room and be like, I remember running on the treadmill and being like, you are funny. You are funny. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're the best comedian ever. <laughs> and, I mean, little did you know, like, I chose, I was like, This does kind of suck, but like it's the fucking internet and it's part of it. And as I get bigger, more people are going to talk about me. And I know it's not true. They only seen a little small clip of me when I was tired and like I didn't eat. And like to me, it was good. And, you know, I chose not to believe in it and I chose to keep going forward. And then when I was in Austin, that's when I got. I got called up, which it will be up on Monday. If anybody wants to see my stand up on yeah, YouTube, it's on a really big co- podcast. And it, I got asked to be on a bigger show where I was on a lineup with Eric Griffin from um, like The Office or whatever. Oh, I don't watch that show, but other people watch that show. And we were at, got to be at the after party where I met Joe Rogan and things like that. And I was just thinking to myself, like, thank God I didn't listen to these little internet gangsters because yeah. I'm a le- way up high up here and they're just still they're, on TikTok. Again, and how we just said it, there's always going to be those people that are very easy and very fast to shut you down, put you down, judge you. But it's like, bro, you try it. What, yeah. do, what do you do? Exactly. What are, what's your calling? Oh, where you work a nine to five a job? Easy. That's not your calling? <laughs> You're complaining tomorrow yeah. about your job? Yeah. Go for it, bro. And again, every you said you had a business. You have a business. You know, I still work for my dad. And we still come to do this. Why? Because this is my safe zone. Yeah. Right? This is my area. This is my time. But it's just like, you can judge whatever you want. Set up. Put yourself in this seat. Put yourself in this mic, in front of the mic. Do, do all of this. You won't do it. Yeah, and why, always yeah. think about that. Like, yeah. always tell people, okay, what do you do? Yeah. And again, it. I think the easiest one is, are you happy with what you do? Oh, man, that's. I need to try that. Are you but happy? are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> so we're almost wrapping it up. And I, and I want to start ending this, this podcast with a very, well, two questions. One, for your younger self or somebody younger or in the same position that you're in, trying to find out their way, what advice would you give them? I love that. Try everything. Don't be scared about what you're going to look like or what people are going to say, or if you're good or not. You're probably not going to be good, and that's fine. But try everything because you're never going to know, and you're going to die at one point. Like, point period blank, we're all going to die. And who knows, when you die, God might be like, look, this could have been you, but you were scared. Like, yeah. this could have been you. You could have had all this. You could have had all this money. You could have all this freedom. You could have helped all these people. You could have been paying for your family. You could have been living the life, but you chose to worry about what other people are thinking. Damn. So definitely try everything. If you feel you have the slightest interest in anything, whether it be, like, fucking knitting making YouTube videos. Try it out and be consistent. Be very patient because, again, shit does not pop off in 30 days. Nope. I wouldn't even say 60 days. I wouldn't even, a lot of people say it takes 30 days to develop a habit. I'm like, N- I don't think yeah. so because I've done things for 30 days and I fell off on the 31st because I, I finished. <laughs> <laughs> I think a habit maybe, but uh, your passion and your talent. Yeah. And if you're very like a perfectionist and like you want this to be the very best you just can't put just anything out there mm-hmm. you got to be perfect yeah in your own sh- in your own eyes yeah and you should be your only and hardest like, judge and have fun mm. have fun yep. and you're gonna always transform you're never gonna be the same person throughout your whole life so when people say oh never change you tell them fuck (laughs) you bitch i'm gonna be better you gotta fucking change yeah every time you complete a new goal you're gonna change you're gonna meet different people you're gonna have new friends like get used to not having the same friends for years get used to you know not 
you know, knowing the same people, talking to the same people for a while. Make those connections. See who's going to help you get to where. Because at the end of the day, two people are like taxis and they can take you anywhere. Like, who knows? Us doing this collaboration is going to reach so it. many to people. The roof. Exactly. Like, this is going to be stars. big. And this is not going to yeah. be our first one. <laughs> this is going to be the last. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, last question. One to ten. Mental, financial, emotional. Where are we at? 10 being perfect, 1 being you're basically done. Um, I don't want to say perfect, but I'm definitely going to say a 9 because I have a roof over my head. I'm doing something that I love every single day. I refuse to listen to other people who do not have what I have or they're not where I want to be in life. I do not listen to those people or take any word of advice. Um, and I stay focused and I have everything that I could ever want and I'm on my way to getting even more. So I want to say like about a nine, ten. It's not, it's not a ten because it's not done yet. I know I'm still <laughs> receiving. So I'm ready because I'm just it. ready to become a better person to help other people succeed and give other people a platform too, especially people where we're from because he's from Baldwin Park. I'm from La Puente. We're like sisters, sister yeah, cities. Basically, <laughs> sister yeah. Sister cities. I mean, I don't know about you, but I really want to make it so that I can transform my city and make it, you know, even the schools better for kids, you know, yeah. even give them some classes to learn about money we leave something behind definitely leave it way better than how we left it because those are our brothers those are our sisters even though we don't know them you know we yeah. want them everybody to know that they can make it damn <laughs> you, you you gotta be here to feel the energy and feel this <laughs> this passion do you want a shot or you sure say, let's do a shot what about her are you breastfeeding no. come on a tiny one no, no? okay fine no, no. <laughs> damn that was huge Huh? Why? Why is it ready at thirty? So this started. Day. All right, you ready? Yeah. So this is obviously the. Yours. Look at yours. Oh, cause yeah, I squeezed lemon. You put lemon. Yeah. Lemon, yeah. You put lemon. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. This okay. is the toast of life. The ending part, but this is. You gotta watch how she takes. <laughs> 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 Cheers. Toast to life. Toast to life. Cheers. Woo. I cannot with tequila. <laughs> oh man. That was fun. Look, I didn't even drink.